All right. Hey, all you wing nuts. Um, my name is George Epta. I'm a huge fan of the West Wing, and uh, I want to talk about the show. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I'm a fan of the, uh, the vlog, the blogs of uh, people reviewing episodes, particularly the, the Nostalgia Critic doing it for cartoons. And um, I've been trying to get my friends to watch this show for years. I'm a massive fan of Aaron Sorkin and the West Wing. And um, I've always been kind of wanting to do this show. Um, I'm doing these other video series, which please check out if you feel like it. And um, just recently, um, Josh Molina, cast member of The West Wing and Aaron Sorkin's good luck charm for most of his career, um, started his podcast, uh, West Wing Weekly. Check it out at westwingweekly.com. Um, based on this, I finally got some of my friends to watch the, uh, watch the show, and I figured what better time than to start talking about The West Wing, now that it's going to be back, kind of part of the conversation again, you know, it's going to be trending on Netflix, it's going to be kind of in the zeitgeist and going to be on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, I guess you can't trend on Netflix. It'll be popular on Netflix. Um, um, it's going to be part of the zeitgeist again, so I thought I'd get involved in the conversation. I'm a huge Aaron Sorkin fan. Uh, I fell in love with him on Studio 60 and um, then watching his movies, um, you know, A Few Good Men and American President. But I actually didn't watch The American President until after The West Wing. I found The West Wing when Studio 60 was canceled and I wanted more Aaron Sorkin stuff. My parents watched it all growing up and because my parents watched it, I thought it was boring growing up things. Uh, I was wrong. The West Wing is fucking phenomenal. So, you know, welcome to my uh, weekly uh, West Wing video series where I talk about every single episode of the show. Um, I'm going to be posting the first few uh, episodes fairly quickly, uh, probably every day, just so I can get caught up with the podcast, and then I'm literally just going to ride that podcast coattails. Every time they post a new episode, um, I'll post a video here as well. So to all my friends out there who are watching for the first time, you guys are so lucky, I'm so jealous, you get to watch the West Wing for the first time. So... Here we are in episode one, um, an episode that I happen to have the screenplay for. Um, I don't know if you can read that. There you go. Um, Once Upon a Time, I had the complete series on uh, DVD. Excellent box set. You can find it online, I'm sure. Any of you wing nuts out there watching this, you probably own it as well. Um, it's a phenomenal set. It's, it's kind of built like a briefcase, and it's got all seven seasons, and it's got a script book. It's got an episode guide, which is somewhere. I don't have the episode guide. Sorry. <laughs> I'll show it next time. Um, phenomenal set, and a friend of mine spilled wine all over it, and some of the discs stopped, stopped working because I watched them so much. And I figure it's going to get a Blu-ray release at some point, so disloyal fool that I am, I traded in my West Wing complete series set. Shame on me. But I do still have the screenplay that it came with, and I have a couple of uh, script books. Because in addition to being a fan of the show, I'm a screenwriter. Aaron Sorkin's one of my screenwriting heroes, and reading his words is phenomenal. So, today we're talking about The Pilot, which doesn't have a, a title beyond that. Um, made in 1998, released in 1999 for NBC. I think it was the most expensive pilot ever made to that point. It was the biggest commitment uh, a network had ever made just for a pilot. For those who don't know, the way TV shows work is um, writers write a pilot, they cast a pilot, and the network will shoot it um, on minimal sets or on existing locations, um, trying to save as much money as possible. And if they like that show, they'll try and make some more. Um, Sam Jackson explained this in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Um, that means that there's rarely a full set built, um, and you'll see a lot of changes from the pilot to, you know, later episodes in most shows. Because The West Wing was such a um, often talked about, much lauded, great cast, you know, it was kind of the show of that pilot season, NBC decided to go really hard and build these massive sound stages and spend a lot of money on a great cast and kind of commit almost immediately to essentially a full season order. Um... When you watch the show, it's full of these very long, um, wonderful, um, you know, cavernous rooms and hallways and people traipsing through and the walk and talk as made famous by the show. Um, they had to build those sets. They obviously didn't shoot in the West Wing. So NBC made a huge commitment to it. Um, a lot of the times with the pilot, they won't just, you know, shoot it on minimal sets. They won't even necessarily shoot the whole thing. They'll shoot with actors who they know they're not really going to cast just to kind of show the network. This is sort of what it looks like. And not in this case. They really went all out. Um, the only real issues with the pilot in terms of what the rest of the series would look like is in casting. And that's not the network's fault. That's just, you know, what happens with characters coming to life and actors coming to a role and bringing it to life. Um, so the cast of the pilot is Allison Janney, who you probably know from Mom or Moms now. She's been in a bunch of Academy Award movies as well. Bradley Whitford, um, Martin Sheen, Josh Molina. Nope, Josh Molina's not there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rob Lowe who was kind of the big star at the time. Um, who am I forgetting? Richard Schiff and um, John Spencer. I believe that's the whole cast. Later to be joined by um, 
uh, Dulé Hill playing a character named Charlie Young, younger man, president's uh, personal assistant kind of a thing. Now, if you're a fan of the show, you know I'm leaving out two names. Janelle Maloney playing Donna Moss and uh, Moira Kelly, who plays Mandy. Um, Moira Kelly playing Mandy is a regular cast member in the first season. She is in the opening credits, you know, if you see her face, she gets a credit, she's one of the stars of the show. Her character doesn't fit, and it's immediate from her first scene in the pilot, which I'll get to. Donna Moss, uh, on the other hand, is a character who was really just written for one scene in the pilot to give some exposition. She was not a regular cast member, and they brought in an actress um, that they'd known from a previous show called Sports Night. Aaron had brought her in to play this one scene part. But he liked working with her so much that he wrote her another scene in the next episode. And the next episode, and the next episode. And by the end of the season, it becomes clear that Donna is a regular cast member. So, in season two, Moira Kelly as, uh, as Mandy leaves, and Donna takes over as the next regular cast member. Um, so, that, that's all down the road. We're just talking about the pilot right now. So, that's the cast. <laughs> the pilot episode is one of the best pilots of all time. Um, if you talk about, you know, if you're a fan of a TV show and you want to get somebody involved, a lot of the times I hear people say, and I've said it myself, you gotta just get past the first few episodes because they're getting, they're kind of figuring it out, you know? I've had fans of 30 Rock tell me, just watch till like the middle of season two. I've had fans of Breaking Bad say, it gets really amazing in the third season. Um, you know, I, I, Parks and Rec, the Parks and Rec, you just gotta get past the first five episodes. The West Wing starts, guns and blazing, it's immediately amazing. The pilot is the episode, it's the show if you want to bring new people in, that's the show you want to show them. It introduces the world phenomenally, and it's just a lot of fun. So, for those who don't know, I've been saying the West Wing over and over again. The West Wing is, uh, you know, the west side of the building in the White House. That's where the Oval Office is, that's where all the, uh, the offices, the staffers who work with the President are, and that's where the business of the country is, uh, is conducted. Well, parts of it anyway. So, the main characters of the show are the President, um, his Chief of Staff, um, the deputy chief of staff, the communications director, the deputy communications director, um, the press secretary, and a press liaison kind of person, and that's that's that Mandy character who doesn't really fit. So um, the pilot of the show is, it introduces everybody in the opening scene um, because they all have pagers, because it's 1998, 1999, and everybody, you know, all the, all the supporting players that aren't the president, are they all getting paged in the middle of the night and being told they have to come into work because something has happened with POTUS. Um, we don't know what that means unless you're a big, you know, <laughs> politics freak. Um, POTUS, POTUS, POTUS. POTUS ran into a, P POTUS crashed his bicycle into a tree. What the hell's going on? Uh, Rob Lowe, being the big star of the show, he gets his name first in the credits, even though the rest are alphabetical. Um, he takes home a girl he meets at a bar, and he tells her he has to leave early in the morning, but it's nothing against her, it's just he has to go because POTUS got into a bicycle accident. And she says, all right, well, you should tell your friend POTUS he needs to learn how to ride a bike, and he's got a weird name. And Rob Lowe says, well, I would, except he's not my friend, he's my boss. And it's not his name, it's his title. And she goes, POTUS? And he goes, President of the United States. And then, boom, we're into the show. Everyone enters the White House, everyone enters the West Wing, and we're off to the races. Um, the pilot is phenomenal for a couple of reasons. There are six main characters. They all have small little arcs in this episode that all kind of come to fruition. They all have distinctive voices. The dialogue is phenomenal. If you're a fan of back-and-forth, fast-paced, fun dialogue, if you like uh, Steve Jobs, if you like Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, which nobody watched, so I know I'm mentioning it. If you like The Social Network, which everybody liked. If you liked, um, oh, what's the other thing he wrote? Moneyball. If you like movies with a lot of fast-paced dialogue. I've had a lot of people tell me Gilmore Girls is uh, fantastic with the dialogue. I wouldn't know. I don't watch that show. But if you want to see a similar kind of thing, apparently, but instead of talking about, you know, mothers and daughters, talking about the politics of the world and very deep, important things, check out The West Wing. It's also very, very funny. I don't want to push you away. So in the pilot, we introduce all these characters. They're on these little arcs. There's a rumor that one of them may be fired. That's Bradley Whitford's character. Um, it's unusual because, A, it succeeds so well at telling a contained story that involves six characters. Sort of like a um, chamber piece, kind of like a Hateful Eight or something like that. You know, they're just kind of in the West Wing the whole time. But it also does this phenomenal thing of where the hell is the president? He doesn't show up. Um, and I won't spoil how he shows up <laughs> because presumably you guys are going to be watching the show with me, at least some of you. Um, the president does not show up until the last sequence of the episode. Um, and when he does, it's apparent why they held him back. He was the big gun. He was the ringer. If you were already enjoying the show without the president, without Martin Sheen, when he shows up, it just knocks your socks off. Um, so there's a bunch of different plots going on that will eventually continue throughout the series, or throughout the, uh, the season anyway. Um, the West Wing was a show that kind of defined continuing storylines. Up till then, a lot of dramas were very self-contained episodes. You know, procedural shows, like Law & Order, you know, every week they capture a guy and send him to court. Or um, ER, where every week we're dealing with some new patient. 
you know, self-contained episode by episode X-Files, what's the monster of the week? Buffy, what's the monster of the week? Uh, the West Wing is one of those shows that started these continuing storylines where, you know, they mention a piece of legislature in the first episode that maybe won't get passed for, you know, the next two years. Um, not only, you know, procedural things about the West Wing, but character stuff. For example, I mentioned that Rob Lowe sleeps with a girl, sleeps with a woman, in the first scene of the show. Um, it turns out that she's a call girl. Now, he didn't pay her, he didn't know she was a call girl, but they traded pagers, and he's a very famous, influential person. And if, you know, if it gets out that the president's deputy communications director, a man who's supposed to write speeches and control the president's message, if it gets out that he has been having, you know, an affair with a call girl, that could be disastrous for everybody involved. Um, so a lot of storylines continue. A lot of them start in this episode. Um, the uh, who's going to get fired subplot is one of my favorites because picking your favorite character in this show is really difficult. Same thing picking your favorite actor. The character I relate to the most, the one I, um, I enjoy a lot of his sequences, even when he's not doing anything particularly important, if he's just having a silly B-plot for an episode, is probably Bradley Whitford as Joss Lyman. I love that character so much. And um, he went on TV discussing... Uh, politics and religion with a, a woman from the, the Christian right who is, you know, a fundamentalist and who's working in the government to try and get funding or get her agenda across. And he made the mistake of uh, saying something very, very impolitic, a good soundbite, if you will, on national TV. Um, she said to him, you know, not any, no God that you pray for, Mr. Josh Lyman, uh, would do the things that blah, 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 liberals. And Josh said, lady, the God you pay for, pray for is too busy being indicted for tax fraud, implying that, you know, the guy she prays to isn't God, it's, you know, a, uh, a, a, Christian, a Christian leader who has taken too much money for fraud and starting a fake church and, you know, one of those uh, Graham Greene people. Um, so he may be fired, he pissed off the religious right. Um, the president is a Catholic, so obviously religion plays a big part in the, uh, the politics of the show. There's just a whole lot going on here. Um, it's also pretty clear, I should mention, that this, this season takes place, the show takes place, over the course of an entire presidency. This episode, we meet them about halfway through their first year. Um, they were not elected with a popular vote. Um, they were not the popular choice. And they're not doing well. The, the country is not a fan of this president very much. And stupid mistakes, like sleeping with a call girl, or saying dumb shit about Christians on TV, or crashing your bike into a tree is not helping their matters at all when, honestly, these characters are not just screwball. This is not a screwball show. These are characters who legitimately believe in good. They believe in righteousness. They're trying to get something done and help people. And all these silly mistakes are fucking up their agenda. Um, which, of course, is something that the president talks about when he shows up in the final scene. Um, that's pretty much all I want to say about this episode, the pilot. Um, I don't want to get too in-depth about it. It is a pilot, you know, it is self-contained. The real continuing storylines and through lines of what happens in season one begin in the next episode. But um, I had to say something about it. It's the first episode. It's phenomenal. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's on Netflix, so you have no excuse. Uh, you have a podcast to go check out with cast members coming in to talk. And you've got me to watch the show with, and hopefully you like me as well. Um, I think I'm going to do something for every episode, which is pick my favorite line or favorite moment from each episode. Uh, I'm, being a writer, the dialogue is what sells me on this. The, the show is phenomenal to look at as well. It's gorgeous. Um, almost every single episode is written by Aaron Sorkin. He's a co-writer as the sole writer of the show. And um, the majority of the episodes were directed by a man named Thomas Schlamme. Tommy Schlamme. Um, that'd be Aaron's partner. He worked with him on Sports Night, The West Wing, and eventually uh, Studio 60. So the pilot was uh, shot by Tommy, written by Aaron Sorkin. And um, <laughs> it's a bit of a cheat on this one, but my favorite moment in the episode, my favorite line of dialogue, which normally I would just give you the line, I'm not going to do this time because it is like a four-minute monologue that the president gives. Won't spoil what it is or how it happens, but the president's introduction scene is my favorite moment in the episode and one of my favorites in the entire series. Um, for a smaller thing, my other favorite moment in this episode, <laughs> it isn't even dialogue, weirdly enough. It's actually a goofy pratfall, and it introduces uh, one of the most popular characters in television history, uh, C.J. Craig, the press secretary, played by Allison Janney. Allison Janney won four Golden Globes in a row for uh, Best Sporting Actress. People love this character so much so that later on in later seasons they would do some things to their character that I truly don't agree with, but we'll get there at a certain point. Um, she was the breakout popular character on the show. Allison Janney is a phenomenal actress, and um, no one really knew that until this movie, or until this series. So, she is a big part of why people love this show, and still do. Um, so, her introduction, you would think it would be fairly memorable and wonderful and elegant and lovely, just like she is. But it's not. <laughs> it's memorable. Um, as we're going around meeting all the characters, they're all getting beeped. You know, hey, you gotta come in, the president crashes bike. 
some of them are on flights doing business. Some people are still at the office working late. Some people, like Sam, are, you know, fucking call girls. Uh, Alice and Janie's at the gym, and she's on a treadmill jogging next to a man who's on a treadmill. They're both separate treadmills jogging. And she's <laughs> very, very earnestly and um, sweetly saying, you know, it's all about budgeting time, you know. People think when you're the press secretary there's not a lot of time, but it's all about finding a way to break things up, you know, managing your time. You know, this hour is for me. I can go to the gym, I could read a book, I could meet an interesting man. You know, she's trying to flirt in her cute CJ way. And all while she's talking, her beeper's going off and off and off. And eventually this guy who's been ignoring her finally says, I think your beeper's going. And she's like, excuse me? Your beeper, I think, I think your beeper's going. So, you know, being that she's CJ and she cares about her job, she stops to check her beeper, forgetting that she's on a treadmill. So CJ's opening moment is running on a treadmill, stopping, and then doing a lovely pratfall Back, in, back into frame. Uh, it makes me laugh every time I see it. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, if you're turned off by the politics of this, or if you, you know, if you don't share, it's a liberal show in as much as the characters are liberal, it's a liberal administration, democratic administration. If you're a hardcore Republican, if politics turn you off, if, you know, House of Cards is fucking boring to you, please still watch the show because it has so much heart, it has so much humor in it. Um, it's one of the more romantic shows I've ever seen. It's one of the funnier shows I've ever seen. It's got some pretty good action in it, surprisingly. You might not think that, considering Aaron Sorkin is the dialogue guy, but there's pretty much something for everybody on this show. Um, it's got wonderful drama about what it's like to be married. It's got great stories about palace intrigue and secrets and wonderful, if you're into military strategy, there's great war room kind of conversations. And Don't be turned off by the fact that it's a politics show. It's very, very funny. It's phenomenally cast. Um, it's just, you gotta check it out. <laughs> Uh, so that's all I'm going to say for this episode. I was going to try and come up with something clever for the name, you know, name of the video series, like What's Next, the West Wing video series. Um, but fuck it. These are just the West Wing vlogs, and that was episode one, the pilot. So I'll be back probably tomorrow to talk about episode two, um, which I believe is proportional response. I could be wrong. <laughs> Let me see. Episode two. No, I'm sorry. Episode two is post talk, ergo, proctor, hawk. <laughs> proportional response is episode three. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'll be back next time to talk about the next episode, episode two. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow with the next one. And uh, watch the West Wing, folks. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs>